All right. Well, let's get started. Today we are meeting with Malia, and she is a student of our program who graduated from our equine massage certification course. So just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what got you into horses and what made you want to learn about equine massage? Sure. So that's it's really an interesting question because I've grown up with horses in my family. We had a cattle farm and that was really, I'm old enough. I'm dating myself. That was before the gators and the four wheelers were doing all the things. So we always had them. So I grew up riding. I, I began to ride hunt seat when I got a little bit older and then actually ended up in Florida coaching. But the reason that I reached out to actually participate in this program is because when I moved back home to Arkansas, we have wonderful veterinarians, but we are at a deficit. We are in a deficit for anything other than vet work, body workers, chiropractic work. And when I moved back from Florida where I had access to so much of that, um, it, it was hard because there was no one here to do it. So a friend of mine literally said, she's a vet. She said, hey, if you're looking for someone, why don't you just do it yourself? And so I had seven horses at the time and I thought, well, that's actually very lucrative. So I did. And then it has rolled into my own business now. That's awesome. Yeah. I think a lot of people do initially get involved because of their own personal horses, but then it's really rewarding sure. when you can make a business out of it and have extra money coming in. So that's really absolutely. Cool. So tell us, um, how did it go for you starting your practice? What, what did you do? What were your first steps? So, you know, I talk to a lot of small business owners because it's such a big difference being small versus being large. And I talk to a lot of people in the pet health industry, everybody from drug reps to veterinarians that were in this area, vet techs. And so I kind of just assessed the area to see what we really needed. And then to even see like what steps, because I didn't know like, how do you go about making an LLC? You know, who in your state do you contact? What are franchise taxes? Things like that. So for me, it was just talking to people that had small businesses that maybe weren't even necessarily related to the pet health industry, although I did speak to them a lot. So for me, just reaching out and talking to people about how to start the ball rolling to create it legally. Yeah, which is so important. Um, a lot of people, they'll inquire, you know, can I make a living doing this? And I have to remind them, yes, you can. But most people are self-employed when they when they do this. I mean, there's some circumstances where sometimes a veterinarian or somebody might hire you to do it out of the practice. Sure. But most of the time, you're starting your own practice. So we do. We have a small section in the course on starting and running a business. But we also offer a business one-on-one -on -one course that kind of goes into a lot of what you were talking about, just like the creating, you know, the LLC, if that's the route that you want to go and how you set up your business. Because it is really important that you know how to start a business. And then obviously your success will be dependent on the time and your motivation that you put into building it. That's a hundred percent. Yes. How, how do you want to work when it's cold? Do you want to work when it's rainy? Do you want to work when it's windy? So that all comes into play. Yeah. So you recently reached out to me about a pretty cool case study. So tell me a little bit about some of the things you're seeing when you're using these techniques. So, you know, and, uh, there's there's been several so I'm not I have to go back and try to think about which one it was but there's been several so probably one of my latest ones I don't know if it's the one was it about the polo mayor I think so yeah okay yeah so it was it was really cool and she actually belongs to my veterinarian but I play polo with him and she was having several issues she started sucking back at the trailer we didn't know what was going on she didn't want to ride off she was freezing. And so I said, you know, dog, I said, let me, let me see. Let, let's just see what can it hurt. And so he's like, sure. So he said, I'm going to send her home with you for a week. And I really felt like this was like the trial test, you know, like don't send this mare back, not doing better. But anyway, so we worked on her and it, it turned out that this mare actually had some issues, some nerve issues going on. So, you know, they'll tell you in the vet industry, it's never the shoulder unless it's the shoulder. You know, you hear that a lot. But she ended up having several issues right around her scapula. There were some impingements happening there also that was causing some inflammation of the nerves. And so it was kind of the trickle down effect. So she ended up 
with me for a week and then came back in another week. And then I work on her every two weeks and she is playing fabulously again. But it scared me to death because the first time I started working on her, I was like, I don't think this is anything that I've dealt with yet. And so you have a bit of imposter syndrome. So, so that was that case. I don't know what other case. Yeah, it was, I, I, but, think, uh, I think a lot of people do deal with that where you kind of have to, you have to build your confidence and that's why they call it a practice because you're more or less practicing. But when you have cases like that, we, you, make such a difference. It, it is a confidence booster. And the more that you do that, the more you are confident in yourself that you, that you can help these horses, and especially I, when they have, you know, weird cases like that. Yes. And I will tell you one of the most helpful things to me, and I didn't realize that it was going to be is being able to go back and reference this course because I actually go back all of the time, even though I've been doing this now for over a year, I will go back and I'll be like, oh, I remember talking about this, but what exactly did you say about it? So I'll go back and I'll flip back down through there and reference. And that has been a wealth of knowledge just to have that in my library of things. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most important things when people say, oh, you can learn so much better in person. Sometimes it can be helpful to have a person there, you know, with you. And I do offer hands on workshops as students need that. But for me, I feel like the most important part, like you said, is being able to go back and review that. Because I know personally, when I take in person seminars, I'll often forget a lot of it especially after over time and where you can go back in and you can basically review all the material, watch the videos, even have it on your phone, watching it while you're right there in the barn, you know, practicing something. I think that, like you said, is invaluable to have access to that. Yes. Yes. It it is. It has been a game changer for me, for my, my own personal horses, just to have this knowledge. And for my particular polo, my mainstream polo pony is the same. He has, um, he is a windsucker. So, you know, he likes to stay all out through his neck. So I work on him constantly and it has truly improved, not just his flexion and flexibility, but just his demeanor because he's not hurting as much. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's amazing the differences you can make in these horses. So people in your area, are they pretty open minded to body work or have you had to educate some people on it? Yes. So that is something that I really looked at before I decided to do this, you know, just the owner's course versus the certification course is what will be my feedback from people in my surrounding areas? And I think that's very important for anybody that's considering this classes. You do need to look at that and you do need to look at your veterinarians in your area. But everybody was has been very open minded. Even my veterinarians, I got a call this morning and he said, hey, can you work with me on something? So we have a horse coming in that's going to stay for a little bit. And so... I've been very lucky. I know that that's not always the case in some places, but I think it does come down to education. Like the veterinarian that I had their horse and she now comes quite a bit. He actually ended up going to the equine practitioners, the big year end meeting last year. I think it was down in San Antonio or somewhere. And he went through some of the classes and he called me and he's like, you're right. And this is just what he said. He said, this is not, this is not voodoo. This is real. I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the, peer reviewed articles over it. So I think just educating people in the area is is really handy, but I've been very lucky. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So are you thinking about adding any other uh, techniques to? Yeah, absolutely. So I really want to do the neuromyofascial, the cranial sacral. And I'll tell you, I do a lot of high end barrel horses. And so they're traveling I mean, to these guys, a close race is seven hours or eight hours away in Waco, you know, for us. So I've got to do K taping. So I've yeah, started it, doing it some- helps so much when you tape them for a long yes. variety. Yeah. yeah. So so K taping is probably going to be my next just quick, you know, um, course to get through. But then I'm going to add in the neuromyofascial and the cranial sacral. My goal is to get through all of them with Holistic Animal Institute. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to having you in more of the courses. It is pretty cool. Once you start learning, it's kind of addictive. So you kind of, you're yes. like, okay, now I need to add this technique and this technique. But it is yes. really having access to a lot of different techniques. So what would your recommendation be to somebody that is kind of on the fence about if they want to, you know, start their education in equine massage? You know, I'll tell you, I'm a very hard sell. I grew up with a family of horse traders and, and cattle cattlemen. So, you know, for something for me to endorse or pitch, 
my name kind of on something it's it means that I really believe in it and if you're on the fence you need to just do it just do it you know for me and I, I was telling you it has almost doubled my monthly income because just there's such a need there's such a need and I cannot tell I cannot stress to people enough how many times I've worked on a horse and you're you're going to get a repeat. I mean, they're going to come back to you. It, you don't have to sell yourself. You just go in and do your job. But I cannot tell you how many people have said to me, gosh, I wish I would have known now or known, you know, back in, in the past what I know now because X horse probably had this going on or this horse probably was just suffering from pain or this horse probably had this going on. Go do it advertise, create good social media, but people will find you. I mean, it is the word of mouth. People will absolutely find you. And for me, it's been a game changer. I'm a single mom. I have two girls. Um, one horse shows very competitively and one plays travel ball, which means I have zero dollars in the bank most of the time. <laughs> Not really, but it feels like that sometimes because those are both very expensive venues. And so not only has this helped me save money by not having to pull somebody literally four hours in to do my own horses, it, it has helped me make extra money. And I can set my own schedule. You can probably tell I'm in an office. I'm a county extension agent by day um, over our 4-H programming. But I'm able to do this in the evenings. People come to my barn. You know, I work on the weekends. And so last week I didn't do any horses because I was stuck trying to get a competition team off to Indianapolis this week. I did six horses yesterday, you know. Yeah, that's so. the great thing about it is you can really choose your own schedule. Like if you want to make extra money, you know, book more. If you want to go on a vacation, you can, it's it's really flexible, which is which is pretty cool. But also what you were <laughs> saying about the horse owners saying like I wish I knew about this way back. I think about that all the time because being a lifelong yes. owner too, I think about horses from my past and I'm like I I kind of feel like I should write a book like if I only knew then what I know now kind of thing, because a lot of horses your next book. I thought had behavioral issues or that like, you know, were horses that you just couldn't get the buck out of them or something. It's like those horses definitely had body issues that nowadays I would be able to fix it, like no problem. But then it was like going from this trainer to that trainer to trying to fix these problems, which training wasn't the issue. It's it's a you know, it's a pain issue. That's 100 percent. And that's such a common thread that I hear from so many people is I just wish I would have known then what I know now. Yeah. Cause all you think of all the money wasted on, you know, different <laughs> training, different tack, different things that they're trying to do to fix an issue that all they needed to do was call out a massage therapist. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and you know, you look at that and you go, okay, let's say we're going to spend anywhere from 1500 to $2,000 for 30 days, which the whole 30, 60, 90 days things drives me nuts. But let's say that you're going to spend that. My gosh, you could have put yourself through this course. Yeah. And then you have prolonged knowledge, you know, it, or yeah. you could have called me multiple times, you know, for that a lot, a lot of times for that amount of money and potentially had your horse back. If your horse goes around with their head, nice and low one day and then the next day bucks they did not forget how to put their head nice and low it's not a training issue yeah definitely um definitely the case and what, what you're mentioning about the uh price of the courses too a lot of people are like well i don't really have the money it's a big investment but when you look at other things that you spend money on and especially education it's really one of the most mm -hmm. affordable educations you can get for the amount of education that you're getting and the ability to actually make a living doing it. So it's it's definitely worth the investment. And we do have payment plans for people that need that option. But uh, definitely, uh, as somebody that's gone through 10 years of college and $400,000 later of student loans, it, it yes. it's be easier just to go ahead and take the massage certification course. So I, I actually was concerned. I have a master's degree in animal science. And I was really looking at going back and doing PhD work. And I just thought, okay, well, unless I'm going to be a specialist, which there's one equine specialist in the state of Arkansas. He's fabulous, by the way, but there's one in extension here. Uh, and he's young, younger than me. He's not going anywhere. It, it was not going to up my income. It wasn't really going to. I mean, I love, I love education and I love to study, but it wasn't going to do anything financially. And, I mean, this is literally adding 
thousands of dollars a month to my bank account. So, and I'm not spending that many, again, pulling somebody from NWA, Northwest Arkansas, in to work on my horses. Yeah, I do have students reach out sometimes and say, should I get some kind of college degree to supplement this? And that is one of the things that I usually mention, Um, like, will it allow you to charge more for your services? And oftentimes, like you said, it won't. So you could walk away with like $50,000, $100,000 in student loan debt, but it's not necessarily going to increase what you're worth, you know, if you go out and work on an animal. So definitely something for people to consider. This is my youngest daughter's game plan. And she is young, but she's my horse shower. This is her game plan for college. And our plan for her is to go. And whether she does or not, that's fine. But our plan is for her to go. But it's so funny because she watches me work on my horses at home. And she works on her pony simultaneously. And so I told her, I said, Kelly, you'll just take over Innovative Equine. When you hit college, you just come to work for mom. That's and it makes my life easier too. So instead of waiting tables through school like I did and and mucking stalls, you know, she will more than likely do this. Yeah, and that's actually a really good point too, because it is a great supplemental income while you're going Mm -hmm. to college if you're looking for something, you know, to make money on the side. Because I did that too when I was in chiropractic school. I was working on like everybody's dogs in between my breaks and stuff. I'd run (laughs) over to the apartment and work on a dog and stuff. So. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely a a good way to make extra money when you're a student as well. Sure. It's it's, it's very much been a blessing. So I'm very, very happy with the outcome. Awesome. Well, yeah, this has been a really great interview. I'm so happy that we uh, got a chance to talk. It may have put Woodford to sleep, but he's... (laughs) Sorry, Woodford. I'm not (laughs) really exciting. I've had one cup of coffee and that's not getting it. No, no, it's all good. (laughs) Is there anything else that you want to share with our viewers? Um, Are you on social media if anybody wants to follow you? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that I need to also be on Instagram. My young clients are telling me that I am on Facebook. You can follow me at Innovative Equine Services, LLC. I'm out here in Arkansas. And I would just finish by saying, if you are on the fence, absolutely do it. If you have horses, you do not have an excuse to not do it because it will save you time, money, pain, blood, sweat, and tears. So do it. And I I loved the classes and my TA again, I believe her name is Liz. She was amazing and such good feedback and so easy to access. So don't think, Oh, well, this is online. I don't know. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Liz Liz is great. She's another lifetime horse owner and student of the horse and uh, very, very knowledgeable and is out there every day working on horses. So she has a lot of real life, you know, case studies that she can share with you and, a lot of knowledge. So yeah. But yeah, awesome. Well, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I thank you so you much. Too. It's been great. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I appreciate what you guys have done for us.